Right now, Rhode Island State House representatives are in the chamber having final discussions about the new state budget as they prepare to vote. Yeah, our Jake Holter is live at the State House now with uh, some details on what's being discussed tonight. Jake. Yeah, Kayla and Kim, actually just a couple minutes ago, the House passed Article 4, which is the money to fund the Washington Bridge Project. The Washington Bridge Breakdown, a major priority for lawmakers. The plan to fund the more than $450 million demolition and reconstruction of the bridge. It's a tap into the combination of federal American Rescue Plan money and funds in the state's capital account, rather than Governor McKee's plan to borrow against future gas tax revenue. Now on housing, lawmakers authorized several bond questions to be put before voters on the November ballot, including a $120 million housing bond, the largest in state history. RIPTA will also receive a $15 million boost, which House Speaker Joe Shikarchi said will be enough for the public transit agency to avoid service cuts for now. In speaking with Speaker Shikarchi ahead of the budget vote, he says he is very pleased with how it came together. The single biggest thing we do as a House uh, of Representatives is the budget, and it's a policy statement of who we are as a state and where we're going and what our priorities are. And I think this budget clearly meets the priorities of Rhode Islanders, and I'm very proud of it. Now, Speaker Shikarchi telling me that one thing that won't make it into this year's budget is a change to bank tax policy. A spokesperson for Citizens Bank saying that they are disappointed by the move, but Shikarchi said it is still a priority and they're going to work to resolve that issue before next year. And there is a possibility that they work on that during the off session. Coming up on 12 News at 5, you'll hear more about what else is in this year's budget as well as reaction to the budget from Governor McKee. For now, live in Providence, Jake Holter, 12 News. Our other big story tonight involves your money. Rhode Island House lawmakers likely have a lot of votes ahead of them as they hammer out final details in the proposed state budget on the House floor. They started debating on the House floor just a few hours ago, and Jake Holter joins us now live from the State House with a closer look on what that budget contains, including impacts, Jake, on education. Yeah, that's right, Mike and Shannon. This nearly $14 billion budget covers a lot of ground. Some of the top priorities being education, health care, and infrastructure, to name a few. On health care, lawmakers included full funding for Medicare reimbursement rate increases. Governor Dan McKee had wanted to phase in those increases over three years rather than all at once, as the House budget bill does. On education, lawmakers reversed a change in the K-12 through funding formula sought by McKee that would have slowed the annual growth of of school aid. School committees had protested the reduction. This budget also would provide an additional $2 million for URI and an additional $1 million for CCRI to help stabilize their operating budgets. Now, the final budget plan is about $271 million bigger than McKee's original proposal. We caught up with the governor today to get his reaction to the budget and the changes going into tonight. So those changes are positive changes, uh, improving uh, our investment in education. You know that the Learn 365 and, uh, is a really important thing for us that we want to have in every home, every day, learning matters. This gets us closer to that. And once the budget passes the House, it will then head on to the Senate, which in most years doesn't make any changes before passing it along to the governor for his signature. The new fiscal year begins July 1st. And coming up at 6, you'll hear from a retiree who hopes that lawmakers do more on COLA reform. For now, live in Providence, Jake Coulter, 12 News. Happening right now at the State House, lawmakers are in the middle of the yearly push to finish Rhode Island's spending plan for the next fiscal year. Lots of projects and departments hoping to get well funded. Jake Holter joins us now live again from the State House, where things stand in that debate tonight. Jake. Yeah, Mike and Shannon, in an unexpected move last week, lawmakers decided to reopen the 2011 pension changes made at the urging of then-treasurer Gina Raimondo. Retirees had vocally opposed the changes for freezing their benefits in order to close that massive funding shortfall in the state pension system. Senta Adavaya is one of those retirees. She worked at Providence Schools for almost 30 years and says the 2011 change to cost of living adjustments, or COLAs, has meant she's had to continue working after retirement as a substitute. While lawmakers have worked to remedy the issue, she says the new proposal still leaves her out as she retired in 2013, and the change will only immediately reinstate COLAs for those who retired before 2012.
and I haven't had a raised cola in over 10 years and I ask everybody can you live on what you were making 10 years ago with 30 plus inflation so it's it's not what we were supposed to get. We were, I feel like we were robbed, and I want to be made whole. I want everybody who retires to be made whole. Adavaya says she and other advocates are asking for 3% colas for all. You can find more information about the proposed changes to the colas on our website, WPRI.com. And now as soon as the House votes on the budget, it will then move to the Senate, which historically does not often make any changes before sending it off to the governor's desk for his signature. For now, live in Providence, Jay Coulter, 12 News.